Hello everyone, this is ACEEE06, and I'm making this video because of what I heard just recently in the past two or three days happened to Andrew Reams, aka Diesel Ducey, the original and most famous elevator, the top photographer in the <laughs> elevator community, and this is a serious situation. Security guards in New York City are in some cases completely paranoid. That is, they will treat anything that's unusual as if it's a terrorist threat and in a lot of cases they're probably a root as well certainly the one that that went after Andrew was and I mean um, this is just not okay that this is happening and this is not the first time that this is happening either I myself had an incident similar to that and have in fact been given bad times over three occasions including that one because of these fearful slash rude security guards who think that people taking pictures or videos are terrorists or, or helpers of terrorists now, in Andrew's case, he was staying at the Millennium Hilton Hotel. That's a hotel right across from the World Trade Center property. Mainly, the new One World Trade Center that's been called the Freedom Tower. But, he came in to New York City, I believe, on... I believe it was Sunday into Monday. I think that's what it was. I could have be it could have been Saturday to Sunday. But the point is, he made a one day trip to do something special. Willing, he went from his hometown in Roanoke through Atlanta and then up to New York. Got to the Millennium Hilton about I think 4 a.m. is what he said. And shortly after checking in, okay, he's filming the elevator because hey, that's what he loves to do, and that's what elevator fans like me love to watch outside of filming ourselves. And while he was in the elevator, listen to this one. The elevator was put into fire service mode. Not because of a real fire, not because of a test, but for the sole purpose to pull him to pull Andrew back to the lobby, accuse him of being a threat and also even though he was staying at the hotel accuse him of not being a guest that's I believe a single security guard who did this he apparently not only did he ask Andrew to show him his ID but he took a picture of it as if to see, hmm, he's doing something strange. Let's see if he's on the terrorist watch list. Of course, I don't know if he was thinking that, but I gotta think that must have been in that paranoid security guard's mind. And the guy at the front desk defended Andrew and said that he was really staying there. But that wasn't enough. Security guard apparently contacted the supervisor... I don't really know what happened then, after that, with the supervisor, but at the end of that stuff, said, videos are not allowed because of terrorists. Terrorist threats. Now, I've seen, I haven't been to this hotel, but I've seen a few videos. I haven't really seen any issues happen there, but I was planning at some point in the future to go there, and now I'm not so sure something like this is going to happen. Of course, 
not, it's not like it hasn't happened to me. I did mention just a couple minutes ago that I've had three run-ins with security people. And not because I was doing anything wrong, but to them, they think I was. In two of the incidents, they occurred in one of the last places, maybe the last place in New York City, or at least in Manhattan, that you would think such an incident could happen in. That's right. In a place that has been filmed hundreds of times. Yeah, I'm talking about the Marriott Marquis. I mean, you're probably all in limbo. You're probably thinking, what? Did you sneak into an employee area? No, this wasn't in an employee area. This, the first incident happened, the one that's similar, this incident was similar to what happened to Diesel Doozy. I was at the Marriott Marquis in August 2013, trying to, of course, film the elevators, like what other elevator enthusiasts do there. And... I had ridden the elevators quite a few times in the past, but wasn't able to, didn't have anything to film, so they were just joy rides. But this was my first filming trip, and I was on one of the intermediate levels that's higher than the first floor, street level, lower than the eighth floor, which is the lo the lobby area with the check-in and all, and restaurants, except for one restaurant that's all the way up on the 48th floor of the view. I haven't been there yet, but that's not the point. I was on one of the intermediate levels. Just was going to circle around where the glass elevators are before, I think, riding the high-rise group. And, but just seconds into starting the video, a security guard appears. And so I turn around and, okay, I don't want to deal with any issues because I was worried something could happen. And unfortunately, I was right. But it was too late. He noticed me right at the moment that he appeared, that I saw him. He noticed me and more importantly my camera, which I was using a big camera at the time. And he goes like, "You must, you're not supposed to be videoing. That must, you said like what? That must be why you're running away from me." I go like, "Well, I like video taping." Well, he goes like. Are you a guest here? I go like, no. And he says, well, this is a private hotel. And then I say, well, other people have filmed here. And not only is it allowed, it's even encouraged, according to people on YouTube. He goes like, oh, you shouldn't listen to those people. As if because he's a security guard there, he knows everything. <laughs> but hundreds of people have filmed at this place, and I get quote, busted, for trying to do the exact same thing. And, obviously, with hundreds of people having filmed there, there's it's proven to be no harm. But this guy then brings up, well, after 9-11, we can't have this happening, as in, ha allow you to video. And then says, I'm going to have to eventually says, I'm going to have to ask you to leave the hotel, and says not to film at other hotels either. So I was pretty upset that in a, in a place that's filmed by so many people, which may, brought this as a complete shock, and in one of only two places that people can easily film destination dispatch elevators in New York City, Despite that, apparently, according to the internet, there are over 200, yeah, that's right, over 200 such places. And that was an article back in 2006, so it could be like 500, I don't really know for sure. In, in, in 2006, there were over 200 such places. In 2013, it, there were only like two places, that's less than 1% that are easily accessible, because all the others or in office buildings, and while there shouldn't be any problem filming there, in New York City, more than half their office buildings have turnstiles or some sort of security gate in front of the elevators, making only people who work there, and visitors of people who work there, 
be the only people who can have access to the elevators. And the restrictions aren't even just limited there. In other office buildings that don't have turnstiles, they may have sign-in ID procedures. So, very rarely is there an office building that can be filmed in New York City. But, here, incidents are happening at hotels, even. Happening at the Millennium Hilton, happening at the Marriott Marquis. And, just for the sole reason of videotaping. Not videotaping someone's conversation, but just filming elevators, or filming the surround area in my case. I didn't even get to the elevator because of this. And, well, that's, in my case, a secure. I ended up leaving, but that security guard wasn't going to tell me what to do at other places. I went and filmed other hotels. And I made sure I did, just to show that that security guard wasn't in control of my life. A couple of weeks later, I come back. This time, I avoid the intermediate floors, and... I was a little bit into a video. I think th this time I was in the low rise bank. And I got out of one of the glass elevators on the street level. And there was a guard opposite, apparently, I guess, helping people who don't know how to use the keypad system type in their floor. And the second I come out of the elevator, he's saying, Hey, sir, you know you can't be videotaping? Although this guard didn't use the private or 9-11 cards. He didn't kick me out. He even said I could take still pictures, but not videotaping, whatever that effect would be. But, um, this is just so two incidents that, at the Marriott Marquis, within the two or three week period that I was given, in one of the most filmed places in the country, probably, maybe even second to the Atlanta Marriott Marquis, and so of course it was upsetting, and... I didn't successfully film there until other cameras were put into play because this thing was obviously too big. And despite the fact that other people have filmed there and have even been given good times by security guards. So it's just I who run into those who don't seem to know the rules of the place at the Marriott Marquis. It's like I'm the only one not allowed to film there. <laughs> but okay, whether it's me, whether it's Andrew, whether it's another elevator filmer, if you're so worried that filming is going to be treated as a terrorist threat, well, why don't you just stop any real terrorist weapons from coming into the place? You don't want your place to be attacked if you think that's a possibility? Well, don't let terrorists come into your place. How about keeping terrorists out of the city, or better yet, out of the country? In fact, we should be locking these thugs up. I hear reports about terrorists in Minnesota, who may be threatening the Mall of America, and nothing is being done about it. And then, the rumor I heard is that 9-11 itself could have been stopped. Of course, nothing was done. In fact, I could hear the same old stuff about Pearl Harbor, many of these attacks could have been stopped, but the government lets it happen before acting. So, these terrorists are allowed to attack, but the innocent citizens who aren't breaking the laws are not only treated as criminals, but as the worst level, and they're essentially being given a guilty toward proven innocent mindset, which is totally anti-American. And I'm not, I'm not saying this America is even the only country where these unfortunate incidents happen in a free country. I heard of stuff happening in Britain as well. But the point is, for us that live in America, it's anti-American. Stopping people from taking pictures and filming stuff that they want to do that is not harming any person. It's not threatening any facility. And... The security guards who do this stuff, they are taking advantage of 9-11. I don't need to say how awful, how sad, how tragic that was, but they make things even worse. New York City has been a 
somewhat paranoid place since then, and it seems like it's never going to end with that. In other words, it seems like New York City's been on terrorist watch ever since 9-11 and hasn't come off of it. But, treating photographers like they're terrorists? They don't... If they were to ask me what I'm doing, I'd be more than happy to tell them. But instead it's, oh, you can't take pictures. You can't video. Yeah, the third incident that I was involved with was just being told off for taking still pictures of an elevator. Outside of the turnstile. I was sad I couldn't get out to the elevator. So I decided, okay, I'll salvage some pictures. And even that's too much for this paranoid security guard who actually said I could take pictures of the murals. This was in the... GE building, the same building with Top of the Rock, but not take pictures of the elevator. Oh, because it's unusual. Oh, un it's unusual, so it's a threat. If I were to say, I'd like to go and explore someplace, they'd probably treat me as, uh, and not probably, they would, they treat me as if, oh, can't do it because of terrorism. This is what they think. There is no difference between unusual and suspicious, or fun and suspicious. It doesn't exist to them except for being the same exact word. Same exact meaning. They're just not... They're just absolutely anti-American. They think they're above it all because they're security guards, where some of them, if not all of them, are making up rules that don't even exist in the facilities that they're security of, that they're security guards at. And, I mean, with stuff like this happening... I've been planning on trying to break the barrier. Go to places that are turnstiled and ask if I could film the elevators. Yes, I'd expect to be escorted, but I have no problem with that. Of course, I have also little to no confidence that I'm going to be accepted. I expect almost certain rejection just because of what these, secur these three security guards have done to me. And what's ha recently happened to Andrew. And that's not even all of it. There's also been two videos I've seen. In which elevator enthusiasts have been filming an elevator at, at stores. And were kicked out for being filming the elevator. In fact, one of them might have just been kicked out for riding it to the basement. Only because he encountered an employee or... Could have been even the manager, I don't know, at the wrong time. And just it's just, this is what happens in New York City. Now, New York isn't apparently the only paranoid place. Rumors are, according to elevator enthusiasts in L.A., that that city is paranoid, too. Like New York, same issue with office buildings. Can't film in them. Best you can do is see them from the outside. And if it weren't for the Bonaventure Hotel, you might not be seeing much of L.A. at all on videos. But, already New York was considered to be the most paranoid because of the quantity of such buildings. If they weren't already number one, they would be after this incident. No other place has paranoia been in, at hotels to where people have been treated as terrorists at hotels. No other place have they been, have people been treated as potential terrorists at stores or some threat to the store. This is just, this has got to stop. The thought that we can't film elevators, our own harmless hobby, in what's known as the greatest city in the world because of this, this rude, paranoid, whatever you want to call it, it's just, there's no excuse. 9-11 is, is not an excuse. It was a tragedy that, like I said, apparently could have been prevented according to things I found out on the internet. Nevertheless, we, the people, should not be punished for it. I mean, we're already punished enough. Some people lost their loved ones. But this, not being allowed, and I know this is secondary to that, but I mean, they make it the, a horrible thing even worse. This should not be allowed. These security guards should be suspended on their first offense, fired on their second. This has got to stop. This is America. 
All right.